New York City schools do not have enough mental health professionals to address the needs of all of the students, according to a recent con uh, report by the controller's office, the state controller's office. This is World Mental Health Day, so we are focusing on this issue today. And to do so, I am joined by Shaniqua Moore. She's the founder and CEO of iRaise. It's an organization that focuses on the critical mental health needs of young people, especially young people of color uh, in this city and uh, in the city's school system. Thank you for coming in to talk about this issue. Thank you for having me. Uh, these days that are designated for certain issues, it's, it's important to, to pause and focus on why. And mental health is obviously such a crucial component, especially now, post-pandemic, when we're learning more and more about how people have suffered. So yes. I guess why don't we start with that? You're in the schools, um, not many of them, but increasingly more and more. Um, tell us, what is the main issue that New York City school kids are struggling with from your organization's perspective. Yeah, and thank you for having me. So I think the first main issue that we're seeing is the COVID-19 pandemic and its effect on youth mental health. We're noticing that a lot of kids have had a decline in their mental health and are facing issues like depression and suicidal thoughts and anxiety. Another thing that we're noticing is black youth in particular are severely impacted. Um, and that's mainly because they grow up in environments that are already stressful and they're exposed to things like racism and poverty and other uh, factors that really does impact our mental health. So how are you, you said that you're in about a dozen schools right now, but you have yes. a, a big new grant, so that's gonna probably almost triple over yes. the next year. <laughs> in the schools that you're in, how do you help these children that do face the stressors that you're talking about at home, um, whether it's poverty, uh, racial inequity, or, or what have you, how are you able to, during the school day, address those uh, issues and help those children through. Yeah, so we actually have an integrative mental wellness model and as you just mentioned, we received a generous donation from New York Community Trust to scale our program to all five boroughs. Um, our integrative men mental wellness model entails three major components. The first is that we believe mental health is everyone's uh, responsibility in a school. So we train educators and uh, professional professionals in the education uh, school to uh, provide uh, the, the the tools needed to help youth. Secondly, we dispatch social workers and licensed clinicians in the school building and they work hand in hand with the Department of Education, providing group-based and individual counseling to young people. And so, uh is there something that, that people, that, that teachers, uh, other uh, care providers should be on the lookout for? Because a lot of times children, it's, it's really hard to know whether right. they're facing a particular mental health yeah. struggle. Right, and that's a great question. We have been training uh, teachers and educators around New York City on how to identify when a student is in crisis. What, we, what we've noticed is that teachers no, don't necessarily have the language and the tools to identify it. So we've been building up their skills, and through these workshops, we're noticing that teachers are more confident. They're able to now determine when a student is in crisis and refer them to the correct services. Uh, I think that teachers should be aware of when a student is acting out in the class. If they're completely withdrawn or if they're they're acting out, that student may have some issues that are going on that they may not be verbalizing. And, and it can't be a one-size-fits-all approach because everybody's got their own issues. That's is right. there one, are there any tools that you can give us that reaching out is such a great thing yeah. for a teacher to, to notice that but but what other sort of tools are there that are that people can employ to try to help a child if they if they notice something seems wrong yeah first thing that we need to do is normalize it I think one of the main issues that is happening is kids are embarrassed and ashamed and they're afraid to say when something is wrong when we normalize mental health challenges we're able to now empower young people to actually say when something is going on the second thing that we can do is create spaces of, of wellness which which just means we're creating a space for young people to talk through their emotions. We don't have a lot of these spaces in schools, which is why our work is so critical. We've been working with schools around New York City to create these wellness spaces so that young people can work through their trauma. And I think those are the major things that we can do. Yeah, those are such good tips. And, and to learn the language, to speak about it, and have the space to address it. Uh, Shaniqua Moore, thank you for coming. And we, we really thank appreciate you. the work that you're doing. And you're taking the time to come talk with us about it. Thank you so much. Uh, and just to remind I raise is the organization and the phone number you see it there on your screen 725-8996 and there is the website as well.